Hello, welcome back to getting started with Zebra for iPad. In this video, we're going to take a look at masking brushes and how to paint your masks. So previously, we've talked about this little widget down here. And as you can see, if you press the left icon, which is the masking icon, the brush type on the top left corner of our left bar will switch between our current brush, which is the clay buildup, to a masking brush. So if you hold this left key, the masking button, when you start sculpting on your model, you're not sculpting per se, you're just painting this dark tone to your polygons. This is actually not color. This is what it's called a mask. So basically, if you have a mask painted on, and I'm letting go of the masking brush icon, and I start sculpting, I'm sculpting everywhere, with the exception of that area, which is masked. So let's raise our resolution here a little bit by going to our tool palette, geometry, and under geometry, going to our subdivision levels and clicking divide a few times. So now if I paint a mask over here, and then I start sculpting, you can see it's not gonna influence whatever's inside it. Also, if you hold your masking button and you tap inside the mask, it's going to blur your mask. And if you tap and hold your masking button and then drag your finger until you're pressing both the masking and the alternative key or the option key, then just tap, you're going to start sharpening your mask. So if you use these two in conjunction, alternatively, you're shrinking your mask and you're also making a more rounder shape. If you hold your mask icon and then tap outside in the open canvas or open document, you're gonna flip the mask. So now I have reversed the mask, which means that if I start sculpting, nothing is happening until I get to that area over there. So that area becomes the unmasked portion of our mesh instead of the other way around. And if you want to get rid of the mask, you hold the masking button and drag a box outside in the open document. There's also a feature within this mask pen brush that allows you to drag a mask outside in the open document and then just go over a section that you want masked. And if you let go of your masking button, you don't need to keep it pressed on once it's engaged. And then press this right key in your widget, which is in essence your spacebar, and hold that you're moving your mask around to wherever you want to apply that mask. And then all you have to do is let go of your Apple Pencil and you have masked a portion of that mesh. So if I hold my mask key and click on the brush palette over here on the top left, we can come down here to mask and under mask, you can see you have a ton of masking brushes. We're just gonna talk about a few of them, and but you're free to explore and try out a bunch of them. We have been using the mask pen brush, which assumes that once you're drawing with that masking button engaged, it works like a pen in essence. So you're basically drawing your mask on the model and also has this alternate feature, which is this mask rectangle we just mentioned. But if you want to go over and select, for example, the mask lasso, which is this one, ZBrush is gonna tell you, the brush will be selected as active masking brush. It's telling you that it's gonna appear the next time you're engaging the masking brush. So now, as you can see in that little icon over there, it's a little different. That means it's a masking lasso. And if you hold that button, then start drawing on your screen. In essence, what you're doing is drawing a lasso, similarly to how the lasso works in any other application. So we can obviously draw shapes like that. And then if I start sculpting, again, it's not affecting that area. So this was just a brief look at masking brushes and features within ZBrush for iPad. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.